Good morning, everybody. It's a cloudier day, so it gives me a little bit more grace to go ahead and show you these couple plants that I wanted to show you um, in better lighting, um, since they are like two specific plants that are pretty closely related. They're both monsteras, um, but I wanted to go ahead and kind of point out their similarities, but also make some, um, you know, distinctions that are kind of pretty important um, as far as like, let's say, maybe style, maybe even the care um, or just decision making that you would take for your plants. So without further ado, we are we are talking about the Monstera adansonii today, and then we're also talking about the Monstera deliciosa that's like behind me slash all around me. As you can see, the deliciosa can be pretty big and actually pretty compact um, here in Florida. I know there are some kept in house plants in kind of more low light situations that you know kind of sprawl out a little bit more. They're a little bit more leggy, as you might say, um, which you know every plant is unique. So. Um, good for them, I suppose. And then um, here the Adansonia is definitely kind of a smaller version. I'm going to bring it here a little bit more to the forefront. So the Adansonia is, um, it likes to climb a little bit more, I would say. I mean, they both like to climb a lot, um, but I mean, just look how crazy and like this has been going. This really has only been like going this long over the pole for like the past month. So you can see it trails a lot. Um, the fenestrations are different in that um, the Adansonii, it doesn't really get like cuts along the side, like let's say the Monstera does. If I was to kind of angle this a little bit, you see how this almost looks like kind of finger-like, like these are kind of like almost plant appendages. Um, whereas this one more has just those kind of holes in it. Even you can see this one here at the bottom is a nice example that's kind of just trying to show off for us. Um, believe it or not, that one has also those two leaves that are right next to each other. It's from just like another plant that's kind of um, branching off of the, or another vine I should say, that's going off of the main um, vine of this plant. So it's really prolific. This is on a moss pole. If I was to like lift it up a little bit more, you would see the entire container that it's in um, and that it really doesn't need that much root space. Um, I don't even think, yeah, I don't really see the roots going off the bottom or anything. So um, it doesn't really particularly mind being root bound. If you give it a trellis or a moss pole type of situation, it will go ahead and take off. Um, so that is the Adansonii. Both of them, um, you know, are monsteras. They're pretty closely related, you know, same genus, different species. Um, they like to grow in zones 10 through 12, which is not far off from where I'm at. I'm right at the, you know, colder end of that. Um, so this is nice. I did want to go ahead and show you the monstera that's, I don't know, I guess behind me. So I'll kind of scoot over a little bit to the side um, and just kind of bring it a little bit closer to the forefront. Um, so this is the Monstera. Um, it's really nice. Um, it does still have, you know, some holes in the middle that you could see. Um, but it has a lot of these kind of like cuts on the side too once it really reaches maturity. Um, I'm gonna try to spin it around to see if I might have some kind of more immature leaves that you could see that don't have, the immature leaves wouldn't have those fenestrations. So. Um, if you could see this one right here is just like a little baby one that doesn't have any holes This one barely has this one here barely has the one so um, It's kind of interesting to see like the different stages of a monstera as it reaches maturity How it almost like kind of transforms into like a different plant um, Especially with the variegated ones. That's something that like you know, since people buy the variegated ones and they're usually smaller, some people, you know, since they're still rare, they'll get them from cuttings and, um, you know, it almost might just look like a regular plain old like philodendron or something and it won't start like showing off its monstera tendencies and fenestrations and show off um, this kind of big leaf um, until it really matures. Um, believe it or not, this one I've actually only had in my possession for about four months now. I got it it was actually a gift from, from my mother, so thanks mom, um, for me to kind of find my own space in this new house that I'm living in with these roommates and stuff. Um, I just cultivated such a landscape and garden at my previous establishment, um, so starting over is kind of a lot, but it's exciting again to be um, doing container planting again, and so my mom kind of helped start it off 
by getting me such a wish list plant that is all over here in Florida. Sometimes you'll see these growing up on trees. They're so prolific and they have their aerial roots um, and everything. Um, so they're just really cool and like established here. So I never tempted myself to buy one because I always wanted to like try to just get a cutting from a friend or something, you know, make friends here. But of course, that's kind of hard to make local plant friends when things are still interesting out there in the world. So um, again, thanks for the gift. And it's nice to see that it's doing so, so well here. It is so happy. If I turn it a little bit more, forgive me y'all, but you can see this new leaf that's coming out. Whoa. Right here, I don't know, I'm still in the way, but it's just so frustrated. It looks like a whole leaf, I mean, a whole snowflake. Um, so anyways, I'm gonna stop turning it before it like falls into the pool or something. Um, I'm sure it's probably making some of y'all nervous. I probably would make me as well. So just to bring the Adansonii back in the picture for a comparison, now that we've kind of talked about them a little bit distinctly, um, you can kind of see the difference now that they are right next to each other, um, how much their size difference is on the leaves. Even with this one being a mature specimen, um, this is still going to have the smaller leaves. The fenestration is still just going to be different. They are both still going to have aerial roots, so um, naturalized. You do see some like empty plots or some really well established gardens that have bees growing up on trees um, and things like that. And I think it's the coolest thing. You'll see them with pothos too. Pothos, maybe not as cool to me because it's really invasive here. Um, bees, I feel like, are a little bit more unique still. Um, so, yep. Just a quick video. I hope the wonderful songbird that's kind of been joining me out here wasn't too distracting. I thought it was actually really nice. I had thought about maybe bringing these plants in, but I like to show y'all um, where I keep them um, just for example purposes. So even if I have to speak up a little bit more and y'all might hear some more natural life sounds and everything, um, I just wanted to still be real and show y'all um, where I keep these plants and how wonderful they've been doing without having to stage too much and everything. I like to just pull my camera, um, make some notes if I had to. I did have some notes, but I left them in my car. Um, so go me. But I um, hope y'all have a good day and everything. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to be a little bit more routine on this channel and promise, um, or at least, you know, commit myself to like two videos a week, um, maybe like um, uploading them to be released on like Sunday and Wednesday. Um, I think that could be pretty, um, good for me to commit to because I like making these videos and checking up on plants. Um, you know, it gives me a reason to make sure things are looking nice, see if things need to be repotted, if there's any bug issues. You know, if I didn't make that prayer plant video um, a couple videos back, I wouldn't have seen that there was um, a preliminary or a start of like a, what was it, a mealybug um, kind of build up infestation or whatever you want to say. So. Um, Thanks again for watching. I hope I will see y'all in the next one. Um, feel free to comment um, if y'all have any of these plants and say good morning to Coco now that she's waking up. Bye y'all. <laughs>